Today I'm gonna to teach you one of my favorite wet into wet practices. Now, the reason why this practice is so helpful is because we're practicing a few different things that are important. We're becoming more comfortable with the ratio of paint to water on our brush. We're paying more attention to what's happening on the paper, how dry, damp, or wet our paper is. And the most important thing that we're becoming more comfortable with is going to be watercolor timing. Now, that's one of the most important skills that we can get better at as watercolor painters. Welcome if this is your first time here. Welcome back if you've seen any of my other videos. So wet into wet painting is important because it's a beautiful way for us to get soft edges. If you have an area that you've painted on your painting that is still wet and you've loaded up your brush and you're painting back into that area, that is wet into wet painting. And the reason why that's so important in watercolor is because that is when you get a beautiful transition between colors. You create nice soft edges in your painting. Well today we're not going to worry about color so much, but we're going to worry about watercolor timing. Okay, so what we're going to do today is basically create something like this. It's a monochromatic study of clouds. And why something like this is so helpful in painting clouds and watercolor is because we're practicing our timing and our paint consistency, the ratio of paint and water on our brush. I am using a seven and a half sheet by 11 inch sheet of paper. So this is fairly small. And what I'm gonna do first is wet down both sides of this piece of paper. And I'm just getting it wet and setting it right down on my surface. And now when I pre-wet paper like this, I'm not getting it soaked. I'm just taking a sponge and I'm just getting it damp. So we'll do the back first. Just really kind of getting it evenly damp. And then we'll do the same thing on the front. And what happens is when you wet down both sides of the paper, it will actually lay flat on your surface. If I was to just get one side wet the painting would, would curl up and that would be more of an issue. But I like doing this because this allows us more time to paint wet into wet. And that's really what today's practice is all about. Taking some Payne's Gray and a little bit of lavender. If you're just using one color, that's fine. I kind of like how these two colors look together. It's gonna be kind of a cooler, cooler dark gray color. Okay, and now I'm, I'm looking at my reference photo and what we see are some backlit clouds. And I like this because there's some different values. There's some lighter parts of the clouds and some darker parts of the clouds. And now I've mixed up maybe like a milk consistency of paint here on my brush. And I'm gonna paint some of these clouds. and I'm loosely just painting in an abstract cloud shape. My painting is drying up faster than I would like, so I'm just kind of getting, getting it a little more damp with a little spray bottle. And you know, a little bit more to this shape. And I can just bring, bring that straight down. And you can take a damp brush, you can soften some of these edges. What we're doing is we're playing with the consistency of water and paint on our brush. And we're getting used to understanding what it's gonna do when there's different levels of paint, different levels of water on our brush. These are the lightest values of this cloud. Now I'm taking a, a little smaller of a brush and I'm gonna keep using the same colors. I'm just gonna mix up more of the same, mainly paints gray 
is what I'm using here. But thicker paint. And some thicker paint on my brush. All right, now I'm going back into these areas that I painted and I'm starting to build up some more strength. Painting back into these shapes while things are wet. Another thing that this is really good at, it lets you practice your brushwork. Turning your brush at different angles. Ensuring that you're not making the same brush mark over and over and over again. If I do each brush mark the same way, just like a downward motion, just around in different areas of my paintings, I start to get repetition. It's so easy to paint in repetitive ways and patterns. That's where our mind finds the most comfort. And so by turning your brush, using the side of your brush, using the tip of your brush, and moving around the scene, you're practicing painting more random brush marks. And this is really fun. It's really a way of making more abstract art. You know, there's not as much concern when we're not really thinking about color. We're just worrying about strength. Letting the soft, wet part of the paper do its work. Letting watercolor kind of take over. We're just trying to kind of guide it. If it's all one big shape, add a little, small little shape. There's something nice about the difference. It's a lot of what painting is about is finding these opposites. Hard edge and soft edge, large and small. Okay, so we've laid in lighter values. We've come back in and laid a little bit darker of values. We want to do the same thing just one more time. Go back to your palette, get some thicker paint on your brush. And this is almost the consistency of butter. Maybe a little less thick than butter. And we're just going to find an area in our clouds that we want to add a little more strength to. Maybe we want this to be the focal area, this little bit here. So I'm going around the painting and just adding a few more darks, a little more strength in some of these areas. And it's kind of starting to look more and more like clouds as we do this. Well, I hope that this practice was helpful for you. It's so important to practice these fundamentals of watercolor in between actually painting a full painting. So the more comfortable we are with our ratio of paint and water and how wet or dry our paper is, in each one of those variables, the more comfortable we're gonna be with watercolor timing and the less surprises that we're gonna have happen when we're trying to paint a specific scene. And before you go, I wanted to mention, if you haven't checked out my free video lesson, How to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've gotten some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. And that is overworking my painting. I talk through eight different tips 
to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below, take a look at it, and I hope it can help you out as well. Thank you for spending some time with me here today. I hope that you found this video helpful and keep moving forward and you're learning, keep practicing, and I'll see you next time.